Welcome to the Making and Knowing Laboratory. I'm Joel Klein, and I'm sitting here with Professor Lawrence Principe from Johns Hopkins University. And we're at Columbia University. We are going to be reconstructing a glass of antimony alchemical experiment today. So, Larry, can I call you Larry? Please. <laughs> Could you just tell us a bit um, about what we're going to be doing today? Okay, what we're going to be looking at today is uh, a couple of experiments in making the glasses, plural, of antimony. Uh, it's an exercise in the replication of alchemical experiments, first of all, but it's also an exercise in failure. That is, what can go wrong when you're doing uh, when you're re replicating an early modern process. So the story with this one is uh, we're going to take a recipe out of the writings of Basil Valentine, his Triumphal Chariot of Antimony, published in 1604. Uh, and he gives a, or the author, whoever the author actually is, gives a series of preparations based in antimony. He starts out with the glass of antimony. In fact, he says, it's so easy, I'm, I actually apologize for having to tell you about this because everybody knows how to make it. So I figured this was a good place to start. Well, the way I started was to go to the chemical literature, look up what was known about glass of antimony. So I went to sources like Gamelin and Melor to read about vitrum antimony, e glass of antimony, and there found some very nice descriptions of this oxysulfide of antimony produced by melting together antimony oxide and antimony sulfide. So um, that's where I started. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first experiment that we're going to do uh, to make a glass, which turns out to be a, a deep ruby red glass of antimony. And that's the one that's known in the chemical literature. However, unfortunately, I realized that shortly thereafter, this was not the right glass of antimony. It was not the early modern glass of antimony. It was always described as being uh, golden, light brown, yellow, uh, transparent, not red. Yeah. And so I had to start over again and figure out what the actual glass of antimony was. So it seemed to me that if I wanted to understand the thought processes, how theories come out of experiments, how understanding the world in an early modern sense as opposed to a modern sense comes about, I needed to replicate the sensual experiences of making, of doing, of seeing, of touching, feeling, smelling, all those sorts of things that the alchemist I was studying actually did as well. Um, the problem is, is that there are so many variables, it's really a difficult process. And one has to understand that certainly 90% of the things you try are going to fail in one way or another. And it's going to take a huge amount of patience actually to work through the processes to for sometimes stop thinking like a chemist and think like a 17th century alchemist. What would a 17th century alchemist do? Not what would I do as a 21st century chemist. And it's but gonna you do have a PhD in chemistry as well. That's okay. right. So that does help. Yeah. Um, I do not find it a hindrance. I only find it a help. But sometimes I know I have to put that aside yeah. to use that as a post hoc explanation of what's going on rather than as a guide to what I'm doing at a particular moment in the middle of a distillation or yeah. something. The glass of antimony that was made in the early modern period has entirely disappeared from the chemical literature. Uh, the last appearance I was able to find of it was in the early 19th century. One chemist mentioned that there are in fact two glasses. Um, what I should have noticed was that the color is wrong. This glass is red, but Valentine always talks about, oh, it's a beautiful golden color. But, you know, unfortunately, color, the mentions of color in early modern texts can all be highly variable. People like to call things red or golden, even when they're not quite red or golden, because that has particular meanings to them. So what I began by thinking was, well, it's red because of the uh, the quantity of sulfide in it, the quantity of sulfur. So if I just add less sulfide, I'll get the yellow glass, the golden glass, like I'm supposed to. So what Valentine says to do, his method is not, of course, to start with industrially pure 
materials, but rather he starts with the native ore, which is stibnite, which is antimony sulfide. He says you grind it very finely, you put it in a dish over a, over a low f fire, stir it around, it smokes, and it will gradually turn into an ash. So that's what I have here. Um, this is sort of like one of those cooking shows where it takes so long to make this, I have to make this in advance. This takes five or six hours of uh, stirring over over a low fire. Because if you get it too hot, it melts, and then it doesn't oxidize properly. So you have to take it off the fire and grind it and put it back on. And if the, fi the fire is too low, it doesn't do the reaction it's supposed to and, and oxidize properly to this ash. So the quantity, after I did this, the quantity of sulfide that's left here is only about one-tenth of what I use in the chemical glass, so considerably less. So now the question is, if I do it exactly following Valentine's recipe, will I get the yellow glass? There you see. Let's give this a try, see if it's a little bit better. <laughs> ah, it's still crystallizing in parts. Ah, but we have a nice thin bit over there that will show the color nicely. Ah, here, look at this. And you can see that it's not just black. And this back here looks like, ah, oh, that came out nicely. There. So if you look, I'll leave, I'll leave this all with you and take it out in the sunlight and look at it. Mm -hmm. This is just the ashes. This is nothing else but the ashes. This is pure antimony ash. I thought it was I didn't get the temperature high enough. It needs a higher temperature to vitrify. It needs to sit in the. Oh, let me take one. Oh, wait, I don't actually see the crystalline. Let me bring it to you. Oh, it's not quite. Yeah, cool. no, yes, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, it through your glass. Exactly. Um, I tried higher temperatures, less sulfide, more sulfide, roasting more, roasting less. And I actually spent months on this, doing this several times a week to get it. Never worked for months. So finally I realized that I had to go back closer to the original text than I had done before. So I went to a mineral shop and I got antimony ore from Hungary, just like Valentine says. Ground it up, put it in the crucible, did everything exactly the same from that time it worked. What kind of um, mortar did you use? Again, I used my same old course. course. Yeah, I did okay. everything just the same. So what was the difference? The difference was not so much in the mortar, but in the crucible or in the ore. What happens is, let me show this to you. See, it's got a nice color, but it's not vitreous at all. Oh, wow. It's crystalline. <laughs> And it's certainly not a beautiful, golden, transparent glass, which is what Valentine says you're going to get. And you know how annoying it is when he apologizes that this is the simplest possible operation? Every tyro in the art knows how to do this. I'm sorry to have to bother telling you how to do it. And I can't do it for months at a time. This is good. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So... The solution was that the difference between what you get out of the bottle from the chemical supply house and what's in the mineral. What's in the mineral is some of the most common mineral on earth, quartz. And just in small quantities actually, about uh, 
two or three percent of silica. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same stuff. You see, it actually does have a nice color, so it's it's, it's orangey. Yeah, it's it's actually and the glittering. Can I see actually. the crystalline? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it was doubly frustrating that I was getting a nice color and it pours out sort of in a vitreous way, but. You know, I used to sit there and watch it, waiting for it not to crystallize, and it always crystallized. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to put this back in the crucible. Oh, and you can see, especially if, let me see if I can find a bit to break. Right. Look at the broken face. It's yeah. sort of copper colored, but it's completely crystalline. There's no, there's no, even, even the other one, when it didn't work so well the first time, at least had a vitreous shine to it. This, there's no glassiness at all. You see? Mm -hmm. It's almost metallic. Yeah. Okay. Now, just with my arm, as long as I can put these for a straight line. Yes, it changes color with, uh, with temperature. It is. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, you're, you're right. Chem chemistry yep. is the central yeah. side. It is.